the question posed by Ali Hadar Pashun is that he has been asked because he's living in Iran by the Iranians that why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in Arabic? Number one, the Quran was revealed about 1400 years ago in Arabia. So if the Quran was revealed in Arabia, in Makkah, Medina, it has to be revealed in Arabic, it not be revealed in English or Japanese or Chinese or Hindi. If the Quran was revealed in a land, it has to be revealed in the land in which the language is spoken. Number two, the Quran was revealed to the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, whose mother tongue, whose language is Arabic. So if the Quran was revealed to the last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and if mother tongue was Arabic, it has to be revealed in Arabic. It would be unique or it would be weird that the Quran is revealed to an Arab in Japanese. You don't understand. So if he has to explain to anyone, imagine he will go to a Japanese and explain to him something in Japanese which he doesn't know the language. So number one, the Quran was Arabic because it was revealed in Arabia. Number two, it was revealed to an Arab, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Therefore, it will in Arabic. Number three, if you analyze the language in which the scriptures of the major world religions were revealed, whether it be the Torah or the Injil, it was revealed in Hebrew, in Aramaic, in, in Greek, the scriptures of Hinduism, in Sanskrit, all these languages are dead languages. So the languages in which the scriptures of the major world religions were revealed, whether it be Greek, Aramaic, Sanskrit, only a handful of people in the world today, maybe a few hundred or few thousand know about it. A handful, a few thousand. These are dead languages, it's not spoken by the masses. But the glorious Quran, which was revealed 1400 years ago, it was revealed in Arabic and today Arabic is a living language. It's a living language. More than 250 million people speak Arabic. It is a mother tongue. And the law of Fusa, the language of the Quran, is a high level of Arabic. We have different dialects of Arabic. The Saudi has a different dialect, the Emirati, the Kuwaiti, the Qadr, different dialects. But in spite of the dialect, the main language, it is Fusa, the pure Arabic. And even today, this pure Arabic is spoken. And the different dialects may have a different pronunciation, may have different, some of the words may change, but as a language, the Arabic is a living language. It is, it is the sixth largest spoken language in the world today. And imagine if someone has to do some changes in the other religious scriptures of Hinduism or of Judaism or of Christianity, since only a handful of them know the language, it's easy to change, no one will come to know. But the Quran is revealed in Arabic, which is a living language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purposely, in his divine wisdom, he chose Arabic as the language of the Quran because it knew, he knew it, it's going to be a living language till the last day of judgment. That's point number three. Point number four. The Arabic is a rich language. It is a rich language so much so that, that one word has many meanings. Many a time one word has multiple meanings. For example, the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed. Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Ikra is an Arabic word which means read, it means to recite, it means to proclaim. So one word, the first word to be revealed in the Quran was Ikra. It means to read, it means to recite, it means to proclaim. And all, through, all three meanings are valid. Rabb, Ikra bismi rabbika al rabb. Rab means Lord, Rab means cherisher, love, uh, Rab means sustainer. So this word Rab has a variety of meanings. In one Arabic word, if I have to explain in English, I would say it is Lord, cherisher, sustainer. Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq. Alaq. Alaq, as I said, is an Arabic word which means a leech-like substance. Alaq also means something which clings. Alaka also means a congealed clot of blood. And the beauty of the Quran is all three meanings are correct. Today science tells us that the initial stage of embryo looks like a leech. 
We know today that the embryo clings to the uterine wall, so the second meaning clinging is also correct. And the third, the congealed clot of blood. The initial stages of embryo looks like a congealed clot of blood. So in that one word alaka, Allah is giving us three scientific facts. That the embryo initially looks like a congealed clot of blood, it clings to the uterine wall, it looks like a leech. So imagine this is the beauty of the Arabic language. One word has many meanings. This is the fourth reason. Fifth reason that for one English word, many a times there are 20, 30, 40, 50 words. For example, for horse. Horse in Arabic is one, uh, horse in English is one word. In Arabic, you have 70 different words for the Arabic word, for the English word horse. Lion has various words. So one English word, you can say in 20, 30, 40, 50 different words in Arabic. This is the beauty of the language. Number seven, sorry, number six. Number six, the glory, the Arabic language is divine. It is pure. It is phenomenal. So much so that point number seven, if you read the Quran, the more you read the Quran, the more you enjoy. Normal book, you read once, twice, thrice, maximum. After that, it is boring. Same thing, what to read? The beauty of the Quran is the more you read the Quran, the more you enjoy, the more you understand. That same verse of the Quran can satisfy an intellectual, even a common man. Because that one word has various meanings. So it satisfied an intellectual scientifically, it satisfies the layman in a different way. That is the beauty of the Quran. It is a universal book. The point to be noted, point number six, that the Quran, when a person reads, a layman reads, he enjoys, an intellectual reads, he enjoys. Point number seven, the same Quran, Quranic verse, has various meanings. The more you read it, the more you enjoy it, the more you learn, and the more you get hooked onto the Quran. Point number eight, the glorious Quran, the, sorry, the Arabic script, if you compare to the other languages like English, the Arabic is more concise. For example, if I have to write Muhammad in Arabic, it is Meem, Ha, Meem Dal, four letters. If I have to write in English, Muhammad, M, U, H, A, M, M, A, D, eight letters. The space taken is much less in Arabic. The letters is much, the alphabets are much less. We have Fatah Dhamma. The ink required is less. The page required is less. So if you do analysis, the Arabic requires one third to 50%. One third to 50% of the space, the ink, the page, as compared to other normal languages like English, etc. And the last point, is that it is a universal book. The Quran in Arabic is not only meant only for the Arabs, it is meant for the whole of humanity. Whether you are an Englishman, a Frenchman or a Japanese, the Quran can be translated. Though the language is very pure, it is an untranslatable book. But whatever translation you have, it can be given to those who don't understand Arabic. It has rough information, it has information of how to lead your life, it has information of the dunya, information of the akhira, and information of science. It is a universal book. It's meant for the whole of humanity. Because the Arabic is so powerful, so sublime, so divine, so rich. Because of this Arabic language, the Quran is the most positive book in the world. Because of the Arabic language, the Quran is a proclamation to humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's the future world constitution. It's the fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a warning to the heedless. to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. So the Arabic language is so pure because of this, it uplifts the Quran and unlike any other scripture. Hope that answers the question.